Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we covered the listing page for Uber Eats. And in this video, I just want to cover the slider functionality. And what I mean by that is if we go to the Uber Eats website and we click the right arrow, it loads the next three listings. And if we click the left arrow, it takes us back. It seems um, quite simple. So if we inspect the page, and we select one of the elements, The way they've done it is they've split the first three listings into one div or a UL in this case, and then they've split the second lot of three items into another div or UL. And I think we're going to follow the similar structure to that, but obviously we'll write the CSS and JavaScript ourselves. So if we open up our code and we go into our grid, let's just make a new div called listings call. And then let's move the three items into the first column. And let's duplicate this column so we know we've got six items to work with. And let me just change, let me add twos in here so we know what column it is. And as you can see, it's messed up our CSS now because the flex was originally on the parent of the um, individual items, but now it's not. So if I go back to the code, we just wanna make a couple of changes to our CSS sheet. Firstly, let's make a new div called listings column. And within this, let's remove the listings grid um, display properties, and let's add it to the column. We can keep display flex on the parent. And now it's messed up the column structure because obviously there's six items instead of three. And what we want to do is go back to our CSS. On the, on the grid first, let's just do overflow hidden. So it hides anything outside of here because obviously we're going to want to push these three items over here. And I just want to do on this column, let's try, let's try it in the browser to begin with. On the column, let's do flex grow, not, and let's do flex shrink, zero. So that's giving us a full 100% um, width of the, the outer wrapper. And I want to do flex basis 100%. So let's take these. So this is gonna be now the full width of our actual grid element listing. Let's apply that to our listings column. And the other three items are over here now. So if we click the second column, they're over there, which is great. And we're now gonna to want to be able to scroll across. So on the listings grid, let's just do overflow X, because on the X axis, we want to be able to scroll. So it's very like laggy and if we scroll like halfway, this doesn't like line up. So we can conquer that by just going onto the listings grid. And we can just do scroll, snap type, and then it takes the axes, we want the X axes, and we want to give it the mandatory property. I can leave a link in the description so you can um, read up on this. And then this takes like a child parameter. So on the listings column, we need to do scroll snap align. And let's just do start. And that means that it's always gonna snap with the first, like, so it's always gonna give this column, it's gonna snap over to the, the left-hand side, if you see what I mean. You can't just like have it in the middle. It'll always snap back in place. And what else we need to do is, if you notice as we scroll, 
we can't see the margin between the last item and the first item of the second column. So let's add a margin to the left of 25 pixels. So if we scroll now, you can see that it's just seamless. What I might do is go to Unsplash and let's just get some new photos. My laptop's been super slow today, by the way, so <laughs> if everything looks laggy, it's probably just my laptop. Okay. Oops. Let's see if that worked. Um, let's also try to get rid of this scroll bar because it just looks terrible. On the grid, let's just do the amber sand and let's just do web hyphen web kit scroll bar. Oops. Display none. And we can also give um, smooth scrolling. So let's just do WebKit font. No, sorry. What is it now? Sc smooth scroll. Let me Google it. So we can give it smooth scrolling by adding this property. Okay, so our bar is still showing. Because I missed the R. Okay, so now that the scrolling is looking quite nice, we want to build the uh, functionality for the buttons. And to do that, we're going to want to make a JavaScript file. So I'm going to make a new folder in the root directory called scripts. And I'm going to make a file called main.js. Obviously, you can name these anything you want. And I just want to import that to our document. So we called it scripts main.js. And just to see that it's working, I just want to do a, an alert. and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to look at our code and we're going to want to see what what we got to work with okay so we've got three divs which are repeating and they're called listings so that 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 shows to me that we've got something we can work to loop through so we want to loop through the listings and that listings all contain like identical buttons so we can build a function to work with that. What I want to do is to begin with, let's just do a window to onload and make it an arrow function. And within here, so when the document's loaded or the window's loaded, I want to get all the listings. So let's just do document dot get elements by class name. And we know the class name is listings. And let's just console log listings. And it gives us a HTML collection to work with. And because we want to loop through these items, I'm just going to wrap this. Uh, you don't have, have, actually have to do this. You can use a for loop, but I'm just going to wrap it in an array from. And now it gives us these, this array, and we can loop through the array. Let me just change my space into two tabs.
I'm going to do a for each. I'm going to get the listing from within the listings. And then I want to do some code. So for this code, we want to build a function to do it because it's just going to be much clearer, clearer to read. We'll, we'll call it handle slider. And we'll pass it through the listing. So let's just define our function. We'll call it handle slider. And yet again, we'll do an arrow function. And let's go back to the document. So I'm now looking at what we need to get. But we need to get the arrow right, and we need to get the arrow left, of course. And we also need to get the width of this um, like div, because we want to know how far to slide the slider left or right. So let's just look at our document. So we've got the listings grid, which is the main grid. And similar to what I've done up here, I'm just going to do const listings grid equals listing. So we need to get the listing through. Get elements by class name and get listings grid. This is going to return um, an array. And I just want to get the first element of the array. And because array start at zero, I just do the bracket zero at the end. And now that we've got the grid, we can get the width from it. But before that, I just want to define the arrows. So in within the header, I just want to see what the classes we've got to work with. So we've got the left and we've got the right. So let's just do arrow left equals listing dot get elements by class name. Let's just do left. And then we want to tag the first element again. And let's just change that to right. So we now we've got all the arrows and we've got the grid. Let's just do some error checking. Let's just do if there's no listings grid, or if there's no arrow left, or if there's no arrow right. Let's console log the listing. A return and now if anything breaks on the page we know exactly what listing it's broken on and we can actually continue the code obviously we're not going to continue the code for the current listing but it will um, it won't throw any errors okay so now we've got the buttons we can actually do event listeners for each of the buttons so let's do arrow no, let's do arrow left Actually, let's do arrow right first. Let's do an add an event listener. Let's do now. And we want to do a click listener. We want to pass it through the event and um, start a function. Let's just do e prevent default. So we can uh, prevent the default behavior on the button. And that's going to stop it going off to any links if there was a URL in there, for example. And we want to get the, the grid because this grid is actually going to be the grid that has the scroll applied to it because it's the outer div. And if I get our, our listings grid, we can actually do a, a JavaScript function, which is scroll to, and it takes an object and we can pass it left. So it's going to move it to the left. And we want to take the width. So let's just do offset width. I don't. I think we could pass it any sort of width. It doesn't have to be width um, offset, because at the end of the day, it's going to snap in place anyway. And let's just define the behavior. And we want to give it smooth, which is quite cool. It gives you the ability to define how you want it to like move. Let's save that and go back to our application. And as you can see, it scrolls right, but it doesn't scroll back left. And it's, it's added individual event listeners to each of the buttons on the page. So this works independently. 
And we're just going to copy this for the left. Obviously, we could make another function to handle this. But I don't want to over complicate things. And let's just do left zero on this one because obviously the left is going to be back to where it began. And now we can scroll back and forth with the buttons, which is great. Okay, so what else we could do now is we could make the classes change on the button. So if we click now to the right, the classes don't change. We could do that by making a function within here. And we call it handle class change. And let's pass it the direction that we want to change it. And we'll say if direction equals right, let's take the arrow right, let's do class list, and let's just do remove darker. So we're going to remove the darker class, and let's just do arrow left dot class list dot remove no sorry dot add darker and let's just do else if direction equals left we can just take this code again and let's just change these to arrow left arrow right and we can pass this through here as right and we can pass it to the left here. Go back to our document and click the arrow right. The button will change its class. And we can do that there too. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me out a lot. And also, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. Thank you.